Instagram. Welcome, Chris Evans Radio. We are back with little Dave for another episode. I have not told him what the topic was. I kind of gave him a hint, but I thought that if we just jumped right into, it was an Instagram reel I saw, and it was super thought-provoking for me from a bodybuilding, nutrition, training standpoint. So I'll tell you this thing that I saw. It's really fucking cool. It was a professor, and he had two classes, and it was um, like clay pot building. And the first class, he gave them an assignment. He said, as soon as you build me the perfect clay pot, your class is over, you get an A, you get to walk out. And they said, okay, cool, that's easy. The second class came in and he said, I'm solely judging everyone in this class based upon how many clay pots you produce in the entire semester. Whoever, whoever produces the most gets an A and then it kind of trickles down from there, right? <clears throat> and he allowed that experiment to play out. Now, based upon just life and your logic, which group do you think produced the most perfect clay pots? I'm going to guess the people who are making a clay pot every fucking day at the end of the semester made some pretty good pots. Exactly right. Why? Okay, so I've always felt like a strong point of me is I can hear that and like instantly apply it to everything else in my life, right? So I always think about the competitor who comes in and they're like, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. And that's all they focus on. And you have the other competitor who's like, man, I'm going to let it fall where it falls. Each day I'm going to do each thing as perfect as I can. Or on the flip side of that, learning how to train, right? The guys who sit in their notebook and they try to map out the perfect fucking workout and they obsess about every little fine detail, as opposed to someone like me and you who are like, let's just get a plan and get hammering and we'll learn on the go. <laughs> and I feel like when I heard that, that's the thought process I had of, do I think your meal plan and training program is perfect for you? Yes, I, I do. Or I wouldn't have given it to you, but yeah. at the same time. I didn't spend six fucking months creating that plan and obsess about every little detail. Yeah, you got started with it. Yes. And then you, just said, you make hey, adjustments as you go. Correct. Yes. In which, man, I would have loved to seen that play out. And I pray that that wasn't just like a hypothetical situation. I really pray that that wasn't a true experiment with tangible results, which yeah. I'm, I think it was. But even if it wasn't, like the power of that of just getting your hands dirty, so to speak, it is so great, right? Like, you know, so many people I think ask me, I know they asked me this, I'm sure they asked you, Dave, what's your favorite fill in the blank exercise for back, for chest, for legs? Guess how you figure that out? By doing all of them, <laughs> multiple times. So let's just say you take a squat pattern and I said, hey, if you had to choose one squat pattern for the rest of your life, it would be what? Squats. Okay, perfect. The only reason you know that is because you've done pendulum, you've done barbell, you've done front, you've done yoke, you've done heel elevated, you've done Smith machine, true squat. Just to rattle those off, right? We've done mm -hmm. them on chains, fill in the blank. But you know, through experience, I can milk the fuck out of that hack squat because I've had something to compare it tangibly to. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like so many kids, like they, they don't have that experience and then they try to come up with it. And it's like, how did you come to that conclusion? Where you have to go in there, as I said earlier, and go in there and get your hands dirty. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's super true. Well, it was funny. It's like, I actually just having this discussion with a client about like meal prep, like when shit comes up, I told her, I was like, I, I honestly keep about a pound and a half of frozen cooked chicken in the freezer for when shit does hit the fan. Correct. When I'm not prepared and I'm like, oh, shit, I did, I needed to go to the grocery store and I did it. But now I have a pound and a half of frozen chicken I can eat. Yep. Like, I'm not fucked. Right? Yes. I'm just going to eat that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, wow, that's that's really smart. I was like, well, honestly, I've been meal prepping for 11 years now. Right? Like, I, I've been eating chicken and rice for, you know, making, putting that in fucking Tupperware since I was 17. Yes. Like, was it fucking perfect? No. But I, I for sure know a lot of, I know how to do that really well. Now. Like, I don't even think about it. Yeah. And that's one of the aspects of like bodybuilding where it just goes kind of unnoticed. But because like, honestly, 
anybody can do it. It's yep. really fucking simple. But to not have to think about it, like I know how many, like how much chicken, how much 50 grams of protein chicken is. Yes. You know what I mean? And I don't really have to think about much when that goes into like all I have to do is look at my plan, put it in a, in a Tupperware. And obviously that's basically it, but like all the other things would go into it. Because that's no one ever talks about that, but you obviously you gotta go to the store. You gotta find your food. You gotta find things that will work for you. Seasonings would taste good, right? Ways to cook your food would make it last for longer. Ways to prepare it. Way to cut your chicken, right? Way to use a grill, you know. But on paper, it's pretty much just putting things in a fucking Tupperware. I will die saying this. Experience comes from doing, man. Like, yeah. and I know people are like, "Oh, Chris, you just harp on this fucking science crowd and whatever." And it's true, I do. Because I think they spend too much time studying and not enough time actually doing. And I know they would say, oh, Chris, that's counterintuitive. You're telling me to rest more. <laughs> yes. But at what expense are you going to pay for obsessing about perfect as opposed to just trying? Like, I've had conversations with people who aren't literally, I just made that adductor video of, or abductor, ABD, sorry. Where it's, do I lean back? Do I lean forward? Do I stand up and do it? You do whatever feels the best. Like, and that means you have to play with it. Like, you have to try different machines, different angles, different setups. Where does it fill up with my feet here? Like, what, where does leg press? Where could it, where, you know, John used to write all the time in the old programs, put your feet where you're the strongest. He didn't say, put your feet here. He said, Chris, where you're the strongest, put your feet. Guess how I knew that? I'd leg pressed a thousand fucking times before. <laughs> mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, if he said, hey, Chris, I need you to target your quads. Where are you going to put your feet? Hey, I'm going to put them at the bottom of that fucking platform. <laughs> what, what if I can't do that with my knees hurting? Okay, I'm going to move it up a couple inches until it doesn't hurt. Like, the, the lesson to me with that clay pot analogy is... You'll, I'm sure they had people in that first class where they watched every video, they studied it, they probably wouldn't hire a mentor. I'm just thinking about all the things that I would try to do logically if that was my sole goal, right? And they and they just study, 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 and they obsess about perfect. And the group with the volume just said, "Fuck it, I just need to make a something that assembles a pot." And then each day they got better at it, and I guarantee they got faster at it. And the yeah. thoughts drastically started getting better, 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 better. Why? Because they were literally just doing it at mass production. Yeah. We and if they did have questions on, on like, if they fucked up the pot, right? So if they, they put it in the fucking oven and it explodes, they go research what happened. Yes. Right? And if it's something in the technique they were doing or how, like, the oven was, they're going to figure that out really fucking fast. Yes. Yes. You know? Exactly. And the, versus, like, what happens when you... Make the perfect fucking pot and, on clay, and then by the time you cook it, it fucking blows up. You don't. You're like, what the fuck happened? I've never ran into this before. I only have one chance to do it. Oh. You know, it's like it's like the how many times you've competed, right? Okay. When it comes to peak week, you know what? It's not much is going to change. Right. So many people's first time on peak week, they freak the fuck out. Yeah. Right, because yeah. it's just that, right? You're putting that you're putting that fucking clay pot in the oven. Yes. Let's, let's hope this doesn't explode, right? You know, obviously, if you have proper guidance, you know what you're doing. The chance of that happening is really low, but you've never done it before. Like it's, it's just that. Yes. You know, I just told one of my guys last week, he was like, man, I can't wait to see what peak week looks like. And he'd never, he'd never worked with him before. And I was like, just focus on getting skinless, man. That's, that's all I care. Well, well, you know, then it's like the litany of questions. What are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I have no clue. Just get all the fat off, and, and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> all right. And again, that's why I will always go back to this. You and I work well together. because At this point, you know with me, that's always going to be my answer. Hey, Chris, what my people going to look like? Whatever the fuck I need. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure when people ask you that, like, when are you pulling water? And you're like, I don't know. Probably never. <laughs> yeah. How much dyes out are you going to take? I don't know. Probably none. Do you have any? No. Okay, good. We don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's what my training will look like? Yeah. We'll just go hard until our body says no more. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, 
it's so interesting because you know the dichotomy of like people and their thought process now where we're overwhelmed with information both positive negative and indifferent because i mean i think if anything you and i've preached on this channel like there's multiple ways to do this shit right yeah like i could probably have you wake up and do a 20 minute giant set for a body part as opposed to doing cardio and your fat loss would be damn near similar if you just go on a bike and pedal for 20 minutes or 30 minutes yeah but would your main workout later in the day, the one that counted, be as effective? I would say probably not, you know. But mm -hmm. if you lost the ability to have a bike in your house and you had to start taking outdoor walks, okay, just a slight modification. It's not a big deal. Flex Lewis got nasty peeled walking the streets of England. <laughs> yeah. Shocker, right? And I think, you know, so many people ask me that, Chris, when's the perfect time to do cardio? I'm like, whenever you can get it in, bro. Like, yeah, there is no perfect time. It's just get it the fuck in. When do you feel the best? Me, personally, in the all season, I like a couple meals in me or one meal in me. Mm -hmm. if my appetite starts to suck. The thing's happening fasted. End of story. If in a prep, I wake up really early, I'm going to do cardio to kill time so I don't have to eat my first meal at fucking five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I just lot get it over with, knock it out, and get back to client updates. Simple. Like there, I've had people get in incredible shape doing post lift. Do I think that's optimal? Absolutely not. I would never make you do that unless it was a necessity. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we've done post lift cardio, but it's like ten minutes on a stair raster. Slow as shit. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. trying to get a little bit more ugh, out of the workout, right? Yeah, exactly. Some more calories expended. Right. I think it's, it's honestly one of the funny things what we see nowadays is that amount of information we have. Like, uh, it honestly makes me laugh because, like, I can't tell you how many fitness fucking things I've seen people wear. Everybody has their Apple Watch on, their Whoop band, their Aura ring, mm -hmm. and they have all these details. They're like, hey, my fucking sleep was fantastic today. My uh, ratio of load to expenditure is great. Mm -hmm. And they're still fucking out of shape. Yes. It's like, cool, what are you doing with all those metrics, right? You have all these, all of this stuff, but you're skipping the biggest part, and that's the application. Right. Yes. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you know if you don't do any of it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it's not, the, the, the problem with bodybuilding this, in this time is not the information. It's the application. It's. Oh, cool. We know what fasted cardio isn't the same. It doesn't matter if you do fasted cardio or fed cardio. And they, they go on about doing that, but they don't ever fucking get on a Stairmaster. Right. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Cool. Like, I, you know, I can't tell me how people know. They're like, oh, I, I have my macro set. I need to get this much protein in this. And they just don't do it. Right. Because it's, you know, it's too hard. You know, I, I found a five guys. I, I swooped down and Oreos fell in my mouth. Like, <laughs> None of this is complicated shit. No. It's just a matter of doing it consistently. And like that's kind of like the the, the beauty of bodybuilding is it's honestly it's the, the term stupid meathead probably comes around because it's honestly the guy who doesn't care to you know change too much, but just does what he's told. Yes. Honestly gets further than the dude who overthinks everything and doesn't do anything. Yes. You know. I, I think. That's why Sam Sulek gets so much hate from these smart guys is because we're watching him grow in real time in spite of all the shit he does wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, because it invalidates all of their shit. Yeah. Train sloppy. His macro profile is spot on, but his food choices are shit. Like his volume's too much or too little. Or you just fill in the fucking blank, whatever they say. Yeah. He blasts gear. Uh, no one fucking knows that. But that, you yeah. know, that's where they lean on next, right? Because it's like, huh, he doesn't do all this shit that you claim is a necessity and he's growing like a weed. Yeah. In front of our eyes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand it. Yeah. You know, it's really funny. I think Sean tagged us in that text of him and one of his buddies where they saw your before and after and didn't think it was you. What well, do you think it was the same person? Mm hmm. Weird happens, right? When you follow the yeah. fuck plan, you don't overthink shit. Like, hey, I trust Chris. He's going to put me in the right spot to do the best I can. 
And if we run into a wall, he's going to fucking find a way around it or over it or through mm-hmm. it. Like, I, I don't believe anything I've ever given you is so tricky that the two years in the lifting person couldn't figure it out. But the magic in that is the consistency and then you applying what I give you to the best of your ability and not accepting the fact that even though you train a set to failure, that you know there's more that you haven't yet found. Yeah. Those two things are the, are huge because as a whole, I would say you train hard. But the difference is you know that there's areas where you can go deeper. Where most people that even sniff what you can produce on a singular set would be like, man, I'm the hardest motherfucker on the planet. You're like, yeah. Maybe. Maybe today I was. There's going to be someone tomorrow who comes in and shows me what the real thing is up, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the I, I always love it when, like, I'm going to listen to you because that's why, I, I mean, that's honestly why I pay you, right? So why would I come up with something myself? Right. And the thought process I have, I always have is my job is to do and learn. Yes. Not to, not to think and learn, but to do and learn. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, and that's going to be the best way for me. Right. Yep. Cause I'm in all reality, I'm not a stupid kid. Right. I, I understand the things that are happening, but I'm not going to be, there are times where I'm like, I have, I asked for, you know, feedback, like, why are we doing this? Cause it's like, yeah. you know, but then it's like, okay, cool. We're doing it. It's none of that. Like, I'm going to say I'm doing this and do something else, Correct. you know? And that's where so many people get like super caught up is cause they just won't follow the plan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, that's exactly how I always treated it when I worked under Shelby and Matt and John. I'm, as you said, I'm going to learn by doing Yep. Let's see how they operate. Um, and then if I run into something where I'm like, man, that worked really well. Like, what gave you the inclination to do that? And then sometimes they'd be like, yeah, just experience. Other times it might be like, I did that because I saw this, this, and this. And you reported this, this, and this. Okay, cool. Got it. Awesome. Learn. Put that in the bank of memory. How can I apply this to my own clients? Yep. Like, it, it's as simple as that. Like, when I started doing John's training, he heavily encouraged me to run my clients through stuff that he was teaching me. And guess what that did? That taught me even more. Mm-hmm. Like, huh, okay, when I did this, I felt this and saw this result. When I gave it to this guy and he did it, he couldn't get there on leg curls because he couldn't take pain. How can I get that client to find that? How can I encourage yeah. them to do that? And, you know, I, I this morning while I was making my breakfast, I was listening to uh, the Cutler cast with Milos. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I've, I've, I've shared this with you. Like, Milos is, has always been an inspiration to me. Like, he's who made me want to learn to, like, be a coach. And they were talking about Samson. And, one, he didn't shit on him like most coaches would have after just getting fired. He wants nothing but the best for that dude. So, major mm-hmm. respect there. But, you know, I think everyone was saying, oh, he was tighter. He was smaller for the UK, Arnold, and looked better. And Milo said, yeah, he said, I asked his wife, like, what did you make him do? And she said, I made him fucking suffer. And instead of Milos just going into a fucking rage blackout, like it would be easy for a lot of coaches to do, right? As he said, you know, what's really funny is he said, I've asked him multiple times to like take it to the next level of suffer, and he didn't do it. And I was like, oh, God, he's going to like, go off he said it wasn't because he didn't do it it was because i lacked finding ways to motivate him and encourage him to do that i failed him and i'm like fuck like that's so that was so powerful to me right is he could easily just said oh fuck he's weak mentally he didn't want to go the next listen i've heard him say he don't want to do three hours of cardio i've heard him say he don't want to eat fish fill in the blank and instead of just shitting on a former client he just said I, I couldn't find ways to make him want to get that last bit of fat off. And I thought that was really cool, right? Because at the end of the day, my job is to teach you, but also get you to that next level of thinking of like, I can do this. I can do it better. I can get uh-huh. faster. Because each time you've been bigger and leaner 
and harder. Yep. Now, you and I both know, like, some of that's due to muscle maturity and your training evolving and more density to the muscle. But each time you, it's like, oh, we've been here before. Cool. Let's get a little bit past it. And let's just yeah. keep milking that fucking nut or washcloth, whatever you want to use the analogy to ring out. Like, I told you this time, like, I'm going to have your face, like, cheekbones showing like Dorian Yates. It's going to fucking mm-hmm. Like, cause you, cause you just had that post, right? We've added roughly eight pounds of muscle. <laughs> yeah. Shocker again, right? <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought? Right, right. Yeah, right. I'll, if someone asked me, I'm like eight to 12. It's somewhere in that range. <laughs> and if we would have had a year, it probably would have been 10. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and then the best part is like the way we do a prep, I'm not going to lose anything. No. I think about I actually think it's I we have the numbers. My last prep for uh um at 10 weeks out from North Americans last year, I was I was 218. We weighed in at 211. <laughs> the year before that, I started prep at 203. We weighed in at 198. <laughs> this year we started prep at 228. 223, 224. Yeah. Let's hope. <laughs> let's, you know, let's 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 see where that math is, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm not losing, I'm not going to drastically, I'm not going to drop 40 pounds for a prep like a lot of people do. No, because you're lean. I mean, listen, the, 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 at your heaviest in the all season, your glutes were so squared and strided at the tip. It's, your abs, you, we never lost sight of your abs the whole time. Yep. Quad separation, quad vascularity is still there. Back, separation, detail, good. No hanging lower back fat off of your kidneys. Like, we just got to dig the fucking muscle out. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, most of it's probably waterish, right? Mm-hmm. And then we handle supplements the way we do, and then you grow into the show. Because yep. your training doesn't do this, your training goes this. Like, yeah. And, and I've had so many questions about that. And it's hard to explain it to people who think the other way around. They're like, oh, well, you're smart with supplement intake. Yeah. We strategically use that when I need it. We don't rely on it. We find ways to train hard. I don't give him some weird fancy training protocol for the last 12 weeks that's going to shred him out. Ride the fucking ship that got us there. Do cardio yeah. when needed. I'm not having you do, you're not sprinting on a 15 incline treadmill running fat off and also yeah. muscle, by the way like it's all perfectly placed and thought about and then i just read your body with refeeds when we need it i mean uh, let me just so i can speak intelligently because i hate just like basing numbers off my blind memory which i think i could probably get it close but right now your food is let's see there it is um oh come on of course my computer is going to run slow and i don't want it to <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, where is it, where is it, where is it? Ah, there we go. So just so I can speak smart, you are inside of 10 weeks out and your carbs are still at 530 on a training day. Fat is at 72. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Now, I mean, you're... Your off days uh, again, just so I can just share light behind the curtain. Like, yeah, off day, an off day is 165 grams of carbs and fat at 81. So that's almost 2,800 calories. It's 2,780. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> yes, your low days are a little off, but that's also designed to give your digestion a break. Mm-hmm. So that can keep your calories higher on a train day when you need that food. Like, and, and it's why you, you're able to grow into a show. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Plus, you're not, you know, I, I've seen some guys where their calories at 10 weeks out is rock bottom. And it's like, <laughs> good luck. Like, you, you better be mentally strong and not let that muscle melt off because you're going to have to train on really low days for a long time. Yeah. You do lots of cardio and good luck. Like, I'm not saying you can't do it. You definitely can. Yeah. Get out oh, of my goodness. I just had a guy reach out to me. I have to, I have to do this. He's yeah. like four weeks out and he's been zero carb. For the last four weeks. Mm. And then I asked him about cardio. I was like, so how much cardio are you doing? Oh, he's like, I'm not doing any. And I was like, why? Mm. He's like, I just don't want to do cardio. 
I was like, well, here's your fucking problem. Like, yeah. like why don't we fix this? You know? Yeah. Like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I was like, you'd, you'd rather just have zero carbs and, you know, not do a speck of cardio? And you it's wonder like, why your pumps are garbage, right? <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry all the time. No shit. <laughs> like, in that situation, I would just simply say this. Like, what if you just went for a 20-minute dog walk six days a week and you didn't do yeah. one for leg day? I'm, fuck, what that would do for you? You better probably take your carbs to at least probably 150 to 200. Yeah. In the next, and you, shit, you, you smash that on your workout window. And say you did 20 intra and then 40 and 40. Fuck. Yeah. You like a million bucks. Like, yeah. And that, <laughs> and that's still 100 grams of carbs doing it that way. Yeah. 40, 40 and 20. Like, yeah. God, you could double that shit and go 80, 80, 20. And you'd feel, man, you'd feel fucking amazing. Or even go 80 pre pre train, 80 pre train, 20 intra, and then go zero. Like, yeah. Imagine how much more weight you can move. Imagine how big yeah. your pump would be. Like, and that's just simply adding what's the 60 times 20 is 120 minutes of cardio a week of yeah. just rolling. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> talk about low hanging fruit. Same reaction here. <laughs> it's, it's almost like those people get in their own way, right? Yeah. I can't remember. I posted, oh, it was off of, um, it was off for our last podcast we did about eating, right? About uh, learning how to eat big. And someone posted in the comments that his problem is he he skates that fine line of eating too much and getting fat or eating too little and not growing. And in, in his own words, he said it stems from, you know, me having to do self-coaching. And, and I think this goes back to our original topic of the day is like, it probably is just too obsessive. Like, mm -hmm. deep breath. And that's all I said to you. I've yet to see someone get morbidly obese and out of shape eating chicken and rice five times a day and then having eggs and nut milk for breakfast. Yeah. It's just hard to get fat doing that if you're training hard and doing some cardio. Yeah. Now, if that was actually one of the first guys I ever met who was a bodybuilder, huh? he told me, he's like, he told me that exactly. He's like, you won't get fat eating meat and rice and food. Yes. It's when you start adding in the mass gainers and the candy bars and IHOP, yes. right? It's when that starts going downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, and when he said food, he meant things with like, you look at the ingredient list and it, was, it, it has one ingredient. Yes. You know, good luck. You know, like. Yeah. None of that's going to get you fat. Like if you were, if you wanted to get three thousand calories from apples, right. you're legitimately eating thirty of them. <laughs> right, right. No one's doing that. No. If you okay. wanted to get three thousand calories of apple pie, that's like half a pie. Yes, with all the butter and sugar in it. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's a whole different story. Yeah, you know, some. It yeah, calories are calories, but it's the ability your ability to eat them changes how much they've been processed yes like you're not just going to go out and eat 18 cups of rice right you know and to be like i'm still hungry it's like i really fucking doubt that yes you know i, I would love to see someone sit down to eight ounces of cooked chicken 400 grams of cooked rice and a tablespoon of olive oil and eat all of that four times in a row at two and a half hour increments and tell me they're still hungry yeah. You know, if they are, fuck yes, let's find some ways to add food. <laughs> yeah. Nine yeah. times out of ten, they're gonna fail after three of that, three of those, if they even get all that down. Like, and I know like the way I structure your meals is a little bit different. I always have you eating 400 grams of rice, like back to back to back. But if we were stuck in a house and we only had meat and rice, like that's what we would do if yeah. that's what you called for. Um I just find it very hard to believe that people overlooked that simple process. And if, and if you are getting fat, eating that clean, it's time for blood work. Yeah. Like there's, a, there's something that is off metabolically with you or you just aren't, as we've said, banging into the fucking ground. You aren't trading hard enough. Yeah. And if you think you are, you're, it's because you're in the wrong environment. 
I really challenge you to go watch those old videos of Dorian Yates, of fucking Branch, of Jay, of Ronnie. You don't have to mirror their training, but watch their intent and focus. And I'd be willing to bet you, you aren't doing that. Yeah. The amount of times I would train someone in person when I did that years ago, and I got them to just eat intelligently. I wasn't creating meal plans for them. I was just like, hey, like, do what we just did. Do what I just said. Breakfast, eggs, and oatmeal. Beef and rice, chicken and rice, turkey and potatoes, protein shake and cream of rice, and throw some fruit around your workout. And then I would just teach them how to train hard or I would make them train hard. They would visibly get leaner in a month. Yeah. And we weren't even tracking food. I would just say, hey, be smart. And when you go out on the weekends, have one free meal with your wife. And then if you go out, guys go out again, have a smart meal, meaning order a steak and plain potato and a salad. Yeah. If you go to Subway, get fucking chicken and bread on wheat bread and put all the vegetables you want on it. Suck it down. I don't give a fuck. But yeah. don't eat the steak and cheese with ranch on it or mayonnaise, right? Like, yeah, intelligently eat. And I, we would see progress just because I taught on a train right, or I'd make them train hard. Uh -huh. You can't tell me if you do a leg workout like we do that you aren't going to burn through shitloads of calories for the next day. Yeah. And, and then just the act of your body repairing that torn down muscle tissue, dear God, that's why you're, you're churning through calories. And then we do that three, four, five times a week. Yeah, good shit happens. The next thing you know, you're like, oh man, like my metabolism's good. No, it's not. Your fucking body is running like a machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's like the, I, back to the original thing, like just doing stuff, right? Yeah. That's where that comes from. It's like, you can't even make adjustments onto a plan unless you've been doing it already. That That's one thing that drives me up a wall. It's like, people are like, well, I eat okay 20%, of, you know, 40% of the time. It's like, cool, bring that up to 100 and, and then let's see what happens, yeah. right? And then once you've been doing that for three weeks, now we can make an adjustment on that that plan. But you can't make an adjustment off things that aren't happening. Yes. You know? And that, that boat right back to that first step, right? They were training hard and they were eating food, right? And they were making results, right? That was is the, those three things. Yes. Yeah. You know? I think that have you ever played golf before? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I always believe, and this is the lesson that my dad has perpetually taught me year after year. All day long, I'm stronger than him and more athletic than him, right? But that motherfucker plays more golf than me. So that's why he whips my ass. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have a coach or he, he does watch a lot of golf channel, but then the day, like it comes down to, he simply plays more golf than me. And when I, when I was 16, my first job was washing carts at a golf course. So I had free golf. So guess what I did? I played all the fucking time. That's the best I've ever been at golf. Shocker, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a coach. This was pre-YouTube. So it wasn't like I was like studying videos. I didn't subscribe to Golf Digest or anything crazy like that. I just literally played more. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> it goes back. When I was in high school, my buddy worked at a bowling alley. But yeah. And we'd hang out all the time. And we'll, we'll, believe it or not, Ollie, we'd, we'd fucking go bowling. Yes. Right? There's, <laughs> I wish I had it written, like, written down or taken a photo of it at least. Because mm -hmm. I kid you not, I bowled a 195 three times in a row. Right. Right? And that's all strikes in one spare, by the way. Yep. Yeah. And I'm bowling with a shitty-ass house ball and house shoes. Right. Right? After school, after wrestling practice. Mm -hmm. And that just happened because I did it for, you know, six months in a row. Yes. <laughs> right. you know, like, I know when, by the way, I, I bowl like the dumbest person on the fucking planet because my hands are big. Right. So I stick, I stick my middle finger in the thumb hole and palm oh, so, it. Okay. And then just yak it down the thing and with like zero skill or anything. And I remember when I was like, you know, then high school, I had people like we'd show up on Sundays and they have like the bowling league. Right. And they'd see us bowl. They'd be like, you want to join our team? And be like, what, dude, we're just, we're just fucking around right now. You right. Know? And they're like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, those two examples right there paint the entire picture of what we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> sometimes I always wonder, like, 
the reason that I can coach people so well is just because I've seen so many bodies at this point. Like I've been in every situation that most will probably ever encounter after 17 years of doing this professionally. <laughs> yeah. And it's not because I have a bunch of degrees behind my name because I don't, I don't, like I don't have a master's or doctorate in dietetics. But what I do have is what none of those fuckers have. Tons and tons of data on all types of bodies. <laughs> yeah. That small, skinny, um, young, old, every ethnicity you could dream of. Like there isn't, uh, I'm not saying, I'm sure there's probably some scenarios I can run into, but like I have multiple clients with celiacs, SIBO, like all this shit. We went through the C word, right? I had to learn digestion like a motherfucker because when people got that shit, their digestion was fucked for a month. Hey, yeah. how can you shorten that down to a week or three days or one day? Yeah. And then you just you just play around with it. I did it on myself. Did it to you. Did it with everyone else. Hey, guess what? And guess what? Now I have a pretty good digestive protocol. When someone's digestion gets fucked up, I understand yeah. how to utilize fasting. By the way, it's not a fat loss technique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually saw, I don't know if you saw this, like intermittent fasting is getting absolutely shit on right now. There's all these studies showing how much more cardiovascular risk you're at by doing eating that way. Yeah. Which is hilarious, right? Because how many people did that and thought that was the ultimate fat loss tool? And right. Listen, Same I had, yeah, I mean, goodness gracious. Like, and with keto, it's shit. Yeah, listen, I had tons of in-person clients who, it was like a firestorm in our gym like when intermittent fasting came out. And they definitely lost fat. I watched it, but guess what? As soon as they started eating like a normal person, all that fat came right back. Yeah. Like, it was fast as shit. It came off way faster than it, it sorry, it came on way faster than it came off. And yeah. that's why I will always say, like, unless you're committed for that for the rest of your life, it's like carnivore. Like, I know carnivore is an effective fat loss strategy. But what happens when you eat carbs again? All that fat goes right back up. Yeah. I, because you completely eliminated a macronutrient. Like, what about if we just ate balance and didn't eat like an asshole and trained hard? <laughs> That's always what I go back to because anytime I'll do a, like a talk on nutrition and have a Q&A portion, I always get that keto, carnivore, intermittent fasting. One of those three or all of those three get asked, what do you think about that, Chris? Yeah. And I'm like, they all work, but how committed yeah. are you for the rest of your life for doing that? It's very similar yeah. to when a young kid asked me about taking the drugs. I'm like, are you committed for taking TRT for the rest of your life? If so, just know that that 99% out of 100 is going to it's gonna be you. Are you good with that? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're going to have to take testosterone replacement for the rest of your life if you go down this bodybuilding route and go to the deep end. Mm -hmm. Okay, you good with that? Awesome. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> no. Yeah. As with that, it is funny because it's sometimes it gets overlooked too because just like overthinking, right? Sometimes overthinking also means underthinking on other things. Yes. And you get these people like, well, I'm going to intermittent fast this. It's like, and you forget about your fucking training. It's like the entire reason we look like bodybuilders is the way we train and the way we eat. Oh, yeah. So if you get rid of the way you train, like that's 50% of the problem. Yep. Right? The amount of people that I've changed their mind on who work, work out early in the morning, and I've just simply given them an easy meal before training have always reported back to me, man, my training went through the roof. Yep. And it could be something as simple as like, it'd be a dude the same size as you and I. And I might sort them on a blended shake of one scoop of whey isolate, 40 grams of oats, 16 grams of almond butter, and a banana. So yeah. the great thing of life, that's really small compared to what you and I would eat now. Um, but you start them there, and the next thing you know, you just slowly start to build that meal up. It's like, oh, awesome. Now we're up to two shape, two scoops away, isolate. And I took the oats from 40 to 80 in the banana to 150 in the almond butter to 24 grams. And then they're like, man, like I'm middle of my workout. I'm hungry. I'm like, awesome. Have you thought about let's remove one of those scoops of protein and have some egg whites in there and cook your oatmeal? And the next thing you know, they're eating a full meal before training and they're growing. I'm like, what did I just teach you there? <laughs> yeah. And I take pride in that, like, because so many coaches would just roll over and be like, oh, well, he likes to go do fasted training. I'm like, yeah, but your goal say you want to build the most amount of muscle. 
That doesn't yep. align to me. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I'm having essential aminos while I train. Fuck off. It's not a meal. It's not. If yeah. it was effective, we wouldn't eat before we trained. Right? Yeah. If there's nothing in your stomach, there's nothing to throw up. <laughs> Super true. Logic. I I it's also funny because, like, I mean, we time it correctly. So what, if we do throw up, it's not food. Correct. It's just entry. Yes. It's so funny to me when you think about all of this stuff that we do as a whole and how, and I always wonder this too, right? Like that crowd of people who preach how complicated what we do is, I'm like, is that your stick? So you feel like you have to like buy your products and listen to you because it's so fucking complicated. Like I, I don't understand, like, as opposed to, I feel like what you and I've always said is like, Hey, it just comes down to, doing these tasks week after week and getting better at them. Yeah. And yeah. there will be periods of hard and periods of okay and periods of easy. <laughs> like, over the course of a, a fat loss phase, a mass gaining phase, just being healthy. Like, I know you experienced this. Like, there's some days, like, I woke up this morning and I wasn't really hungry for my first meal. It didn't matter. <laughs> I eat it. Yeah. Because I have to. <laughs> yeah. Could have easily talked myself into five meals today. Yeah. And that's that's exactly where you don't make progress. Is you some you, there's times when you listen to the man upstairs and there's times you just say, Go ahead and go fuck yourself. <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. And they're like, you know, if you, oh, you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm not hungry. It's like cool. You know, you set yourself up for the best day possible. Yes. You know, like did you did I wake up when I should have? Or did I sleep in? Right. Am I going to make my first meal start at 9 a.m. or 7? Correct. Because if I start at 9 a.m., all of my fucking meals are going to be coming right after each other. Yes. <laughs> you know? And every time you do that, you're missing out on a huge chunk of the little things that do matter. But there's also the point of just of getting them, just, just making it happen. You know? It's never, it's never going to be perfect. It, it, I go back to this analogy all the time of the uh, dude and his horse are walking in the in the forest, and the the dude's like, "Man, I can't see where I'm going." And the horse is like, "Well, I can see right. I can see. Can you see right in front of you? Can you see the next step." It's like take that and do that a thousand times, or four thousand times, or ten thousand times, and at some point on that journey of taking that next step. You get to where you want to fucking go. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you can see that thing so far, you can't even see it. You know that goal is so fucking far out there. Right. And if you constantly just look for it, look at it, and you don't fucking move, yep. nothing's gonna happen. You look down at your feet, you're like, okay, cool, I can this step right here, and then this next step here. You keep your head down, you keep fucking working. You eat that fucking meal you don't want to eat. You do that fucking set of squats, what you know is gonna suck. And you do it after again and again. You just do that. When you do look up, you're like, well, what, well, holy shit, I'm fucking where I'm at. You know? It's a matter of doing those things a million times before you even, you know, anything happens. I mean, like, how many meals have we had since I started with you? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll do the rough math on it. So let's say... Yeah. Six times three sixty five times seven. That's fifteen thousand three hundred thirty. Yeah, and there was a period of time we were eating seven. You know, if it was needed, and it's just one of those. And then you factor in how many times I've worked out in between there, and it's just every single step what leads up to something great. Yeah. It's not. It's never a huge step. What's going to lead to something great? It's a series of small little actions. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, it goes back to that thing of like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's an insurmountable task. And I'm sure, as we've talked about many times, like you starting bodybuilding was fun, but also probably seemed very overwhelming for most people. Like, oh, the skinny kid who wants to be a pro or wants just to be bigger and better. Like, yeah. good, good luck, man. And you're like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> Let's just yeah. do it. Like, yeah. 
I laugh about it all the time because I used to get so much shit for bringing my Tupperware, my bag of Tupperwares with me. Right. Yes. People were like, oh, here's Dave with his meals again. You know, I'm 140 pounds. But like, look at him. He's, get, he's doing his, he got his fucking meals. Look at, you know, why does that fucking matter? Why don't you just go eat a, why don't you go eat a burger? Yes. You know, and I still have that same goddamn bag with me. No one asked the fucking question. They're like, this makes fucking sense. This guy's 230 right now. And, it, you know, no one even thinks about it. They're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's like, it's the same goddamn meals in this bag. I used to get made fun of so aggressive. Like the guys at the gym who didn't know what was up would call me Mr. Intensity. Because like, ah, that's a little skinny kid over there going until he almost fucking pukes every day. Like, and they'd give me, ah, Mr. Intensity, like give me shit about it. I see those motherfuckers today and they're like, man, I remember when you used to be in the gym just banging like you are now. I'm like, mm -hmm. yep. You know, like you said, now to them, like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> That little skinny motherfucker who was squatting until he couldn't see straight, that actually paid off. It took two yeah. fucking decades. <laughs> you know, you, you made a point earlier about just making that active decision. And I feel like that's, that's all it takes, right? And if you break it down to something as simple as like the final two to four reps of a hack squat and you come up and like that time almost feels like a standstill, right? Where in your brain, you're like playing through this, like, there's more, there's more. Fuck, that's burning. I barely stood up. Go again. I don't think I can get another one. Go again. And you have that, like, moment in your brain where it's like, I could rack it or I could go down again and see what the fuck yep. happens. And I think so many Honestly, that's why hack squats are my favorite. <laughs> it's because if I have a spotter, right. right, or if I don't, right, and I get it. And I go down and I come up with it and it's a fucking struggle. I don't know if I can even go down with it again, but I'm going to fucking go down with it again because I might as well. Right. You know, if I go down there and I try to get it up and it doesn't happen, it, I end up at the bottom. If I And the fun part is like, if you have a spotter, right, sometimes them just being there and you're going to go down with it and they, take, they help you with that last quarter. Yes. And you're like, okay, well, we'll go down again. You take that load all the way back down to the bottom and you get halfway up and they pull it up again. And you're like, fuck you, I'm going again, you know? And then you go down to the bottom and they have to yank that thing all the way up. And then you rack it. You're like fucked up at that point. You're like, you can't, you're seeing stars, you know, you're tasting blood in your mouth. And you're like, okay, cool. I can sleep good knowing that I at least went down with it one last time. Right. You know what I mean? I may have, I may, he, Zach may have lifted all of that off of me at the bottom, yeah. but I took it to the bottom yeah. and I, I did that part, you know, and that's all I know. I don't know how many reps I did. All I know is I went and I, I got up and I went down again with it. Yep. And at, when I'm at the bottom, all I know I'm going to try to do is get back the fuck up. Yes. You know, yep. and if I get to a point where that doesn't happen, I'm fucking happy about it. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm sure you've experienced this too. Like when you've had somebody giving you some force reps and it feels like they take 50 or poor percent of that load. Right. And you'll rack it and be like, man, how much of that did you do? Like, ah, it's helped a little bit. I always wonder, like, especially, you know, if, if I have a good training partner who I trust, they're not going to lie to me. They're like, yeah. no, I helped a lot. Or they're like, no, I man, I'm, I'm barely helped you out of that second point and i'm like fuck was that my body like auto regulating to like figure out a fucking way it was like fight or flight because it felt you know it feels light i've always had that with like, arms right like you're doing a curl and like you barely just helped me but it felt like you took all the load and it's like huh what was happening there like yeah is that a sweet magic zone of like my body was tapping into some like crazy like weird strength that i've never felt before because the muscle feels almost dead like it's like oh man that was so easy I don't know. Something I've always wondered about. Yeah. You guys with that thought. <laughs> but I think at, at the end of the day, to wrap all this up, I hope that this lesson that we taught is we're okay with attempting perfection, but don't let that cloud your judgment in doing. And I, can't, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie Painting Game with Mark Wahlberg, where he's like, I'm a doer. And I bought I'll, I remember watching that movie and resonating to it because I'm like, man, don't don't give me the studies. Like, let's just fucking figure this out as we go. Like, 
And that to me is what I love. And I've always loved and been attracted to by bodybuilding is like, huh, like let's go in the gym and I'm going to train lat pull downs. Let's use this bar. What did that feel like this week? And the next week I want to try this bar, this handle, or move my hand this way or sit up more tall versus lean back versus high sternum versus sunken abs. Like, and just tinker around with shit. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what the fun is, right? Like, how many times, you know, I'll play these games. I'm sure you do the same. How many days can I go in a row without without fucking anything up? No one knows but me. <laughs> yeah. it, it always reminds me of those job sites where it's like, we've had X amount of days without an accident. <laughs> yeah. That's what bodybuilding is. How many yeah. days can you go without missing a meal and without having a shitty set or missing a top set or not giving it your own a back off? Like, how many of those days can we go? without missing health supplements, without missing water. Like if we do that, do it for a year, I guarantee you'll be in a better spot. So to me, mark it down, March 27th. Be as perfect as you can for the next year. See what happens. I bet you'll be bigger and better and harder and leaner. And you'll learn a fuckload more than reading your fucking studies. I think that's it. I'm done ranting now. Enjoy your day. Right. Dave, we are done. <laughs>